Nerds International proudly presents. I hope you bought some pre shot trousers, ladies and gentlemen, because this time it's going to be so scary, actually. This one is not the most scary one. But that's not the point, because it is time for. Raven Lord. A DCC RPG spooky actual play featuring Grimald and the Butler. Oh, I'm Daniel, a talking skull on a stick. Hold on to your asses, bitches! Welcome back to our DCC actual play. This is Ravenlord. Today we are playing some Ravenloft in DCC. We're back, we're back once again! New Year's happened, Christmas happened, and as a result, we, you know, it's been too bloody long. We delays understand that, happened. listeners. Yep. Yep. Sorry, delays happened, it's going to happen, but we're back in the saddle, and we ain't we ain't going nowhere. Nope. All right? And so, let's go on with it. Um, Nick, who are you playing today? Hello, my name's Nick, and I'll be playing Grimmels, the Hobbit, Nobleman. And James? My name's James, and I'll be playing the Butler, the Butler. <laughs> 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 all right so let's not let's no mess no none of that all none right of that, please. and let's get on with it yes good grimald and the butler after recently being swallowed by a gargantuan pink mist you find yourselves in ravenloft a foreign nightmare land of dread. You have spent many weeks journeying through this hellish place in order to find Strahd von Zarevich, who you are informed may be able to help you get home. This long journey has subjected you to all manner of horrors such as cannibals, a small girl's head exploding, and walking skeletons. One of these walking skeletons has, however, become a good friend in the form of Daniel, whose form has changed somewhat, and he is now a skull on a stick. But he is not only a useful tool and weapon, but has been a reliable travelling companion. Yesterday, however, was not a tale of horror for you two, much anyway, but more of a tale of justice, as you visited the home of a poltergeist, learned her story, and allowed her to move peacefully into the afterlife by killing her sick, woman-slaughtering husband. And now you sit in a pub named The Nevermore, in a town named Maven, just down the road from the home of the poltergeist. It was in this place that you killed the husband, but thankfully you got away with it, so drinking here is still an option. It is a busy Saturday night once again in the gnomish town of Maven. Looking out the window, you see many gnomish inventions, such as bottled light hanging from lamp posts, carriages drawn by no horse weaving through the cobbled streets, and one drunken gnome with an extending finger which he uses to annoy women. Although, as you stare on out the window, you can see that he is promptly arrested. <laughs> you two sit on a table in the corner of the pub, cramped shoulder to shoulder with men of all shapes and sizes. People chat raucously and swill away with merriment as they have a classic Saturday night piss up. Look you two, keep your voices down, considering that uh, we have kind of returned to the scene of the crime, if you know what I mean, but right, you are, sir. at the moment it seems like we, uh, well, look, no one's saying anything. No, I, I, I do believe, sir, we've gotten away with it. All right, let's not let's not count our uh, let's not count our cows, is it? That what they say? Till they fly home in it or something, something like that. Daniel, the skull on a stick, your travelling companion, speaks up and he says, "Look, get it? It ain't count your cows before they come home. It's count the chickens before they hatch." Oh right, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, stop talking about the murder that we did in this pub. Oh, all right. Don't use. I said, don't use. That I word. said, don't stop talking about the. I put my hand over his mouth. Yeah, that's it. All right, ready? Compose yourself, Daniel. Right, removed. What's the plan anyway? What are we gonna do? We go. We gotta get all the way to Strad Van Zarevich. We got that crazy book, the Book of Planes, but we ain't got any clue how to use it. No, I am sick to my back teeth of walking through woods so I do like the look of that wagon that's got no horse uh, and I am quite handy with stealing stuff what do you mean that gnomish weird thing that they've yeah. been driving around outside Ooh, yeah. yeah we need one of them my boys one of them so you, you last night you commit one crime and you, 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 you that's it one that's crime it. of passion yeah right what I'm saying is you do one crime and now you now, now the gloves are off 
you're gonna steal you're gonna steal a vehicle. Um, nah, uh, no, well, we're, we're going to borrow it. Yeah, we're gonna borrow. Oh, it. you're gonna bring it back? Yes. Oh yeah, I find that hard to believe. Look, do you want to get out of here or not? All right, point taken. Point yeah. taken. Okay, we steal the wagon. Th- that is borrow jo- the wagon. Uh, borrow the wagon. Yeah, we're, that we're not gonna give back. Well, it's up to the owner to take it back once we're finished with it, but we won't be uh, keeping it so in a, in, a, in a roundabout way. Yeah, it's borrowing, isn't it? Well, have you got a plan? Uh, well. No. No. Not yet. Well, good. Perhaps if some one of us could diverge the uh, carriage owner, the other one could uh, maybe, or, or, better one, we could uh, tell the owner to come down an alley and then... uh, Kick him in the nuts. Well, yeah, yeah, that that would work. Or, or, you know, at least... uh, Immobilising him a little bit. Wait, I got another idea. Why don't you uh, find the carriage owner, find out who he is, and then uh, buy him a drink, and then kick him in the nuts? It's not a bad idea. Get him drunk. Do you have a thing for kicking them in the nuts? I wonder if that there ain't a plan that ain't enhanced by kicking somebody in the nuts. He's got a point there. All right, let's finish these drinks then, and we'll pop outside and have a look. You finish your drinks and head outside of the pub. You can see that there's a light drizzle and you can see people milling around the streets of Maven. There's gnomes, there's humans, dwarves, people of all sizes. And there's a couple of these carriages of no horse drawn parked outside the pub. Although their owners aren't particularly visible at the moment. They could be in the pub, they could be just parked outside the pub, but from a cursory glance it's impossible to know walking up to the, both of the carriages you can see that they resemble any normal stagecoach mm-hmm. complete with wide wooden wheels stacks of luggage on the top and vermilion highlights accenting the wooden body however at the front where one would usually attach a horse you can see there's a large unsightly metal box with all kinds of gears and gizmondos poking out and this strange contraption is attached to the front of the carriage with huge metal bolts. And at the back of the wagon too, you can see a huge pipe jutting from its rear like a metallic tail. The only thing is that there are two wagons parked out the front at the moment. And one is black mm-hmm. and kind of like a little bit battered. And okay. the other one is, is just the, the natural wood color. Mm-hmm. Right, well, look, we've got two options here, boys. Either the black one or the wooden one. Now, anyone know how these things start? No. Do you, it, well, you just whip the horse. Oh no. That's uh, yeah. That's the yeah. Okay. We got. Okay. I understand it now. Do you reckon you whip the box? You got gotta whip the box. Whip surely. the box, didn't you? Yeah. Just whip the box. If there's no horse, it's got a little box on the front. Just whip the box. Right. So always say, jump on. I'll whip the box. Off we go. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Easy. Right, you are, sir. Right, I would like to take one more glance around. Make sure no one is looking particularly at us. Give me a perception roll. Okay. Uh, 13. You you take a look around, and you are certain that nobody's looking. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good to me. Right, Daniel, oh. don't take this the wrong way, uh, but I might have to use your noggin to whip said metal horse. Is oh, that all the, right? What the fuck, man? Well, what I the... got a whip. See? So you're going to... All the time that we're, we're going to be riding this goddamn goddamn crazy invention, you're going to be hitting my head against the metal box. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Look, ain't I got rights? Ain't, it, ain't there unions? Uh, mm. yeah. No. In our world. So you can you can raise a complaint when we get back to our world, yeah? How the fuck, how long's that going to be? A couple of weeks. This sucks. And then you, you, you I, mustn't forget the admin fee. Uh, oh, yeah. Admin fee. Yeah, we we'll go over that when we get home. We we'll go over the terms and conditions when we get when we get home. But Naturally, needs must, and you must be the whip. You do have the hardest noggin known to man. Just, just get on with it, will you? He's a boy. Isn't stop he? talking. Stop talking rubbish. He's a boy. But back in my day, when I used to lift wagons, we we didn't talk about goddamn admin fees, but we certainly didn't use our friends' heads to whip goddamn box horses. Yeah, well, well, I'm thinking on my feet now. Right, you ready, boys? Yes, sir. Here we go. All right, we're going to get on top of the of the wagon. Yeah. Yeah. All right, both of you give me an agility roll to climb to the top. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, ten. It's pretty easy, and you guys climb to the top of the wagon. 
Um, you're up there incredibly fast. And now, Grimald, you grab Daniel by the stick end and smash the box with his head. All you hear is a big metallic thud and the wagon doesn't start in any way, shape or form. In fact, there are no reins up there to speak of. It's very strange, but a gnome comes bursting out the pub. Hey, up! What the fuck are you doing? Uh, 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 inspectors! We thought we'd take, um, just, just inspect the, the wagon. Making sure it's compliant. You're bloody trying to thieve it, you little bastard. Uh, oi! That's rich coming from you, mate! Yeah, um, when, What's when that not... supposed to mean? What, you're smaller than me, you little pipsqueak? There's no need for that when you're trying to thieve a man's carriage. Uh, we are not thieving your carriage, we are inspecting it. Yeah, well... Well, well, well show us your inspector's badge, then. Actually, we're Where's gonna... that? I haven't seen any ID from you, little fucker. Uh, we're, we're gonna borrow it, actually, or it's just borrowing. You, you're gonna borrow my carriage? N- uh, no. Without asking me? I mean, I've yeah. never met you in my bloody life. Yeah, we saw it. Right, get off it or I'ma call the police. Look, we've had an anonymous tip-off, all right? We've had an anonymous tip-off that there's a carriage by no horse drawn that's been knocking about, uh, uh, spilling, uh, uh, going through puddles and splashing maidens. Is that you? Never in my life have I heard such rubbish. Get um, off me carriage. Uh, you've got five seconds or I'ma call the police. Well, we are kind of technically a wing of the police, so we got five. to call us. Four. Oh, get, get down. Three. Catch me, butler. Two. <laughs> the butler, you jump off the carriage and then you catch Grimald as he jumps into your arms. That's more like it. Right now, bugger off. I've had enough of your bloody ways. You outsiders are all the same. You're coming here, stealing our jobs, stealing our bloody gnome women. Uh, what? That you was, heard me. That was never our intention. Well, look at you. You're just like all the rest with your tall height, your tall long legs striding around like you own the place. Look at you, you scum, you scum. Look, there's no, look, I think we've all started off on the wrong foot, so let's just do a little rewind. Introductions. My name is Bibble. Yep, Bibble, is it? Yeah. And I'm Babble. And that's Babble. Bibble and Babble. Indeed. Nice to meet you, young man. And you are? My name's Fizzwicket, but that's not bloody important. Fizzwicket. Shut up. Bibble, babble, fuck off. Right, I've seen you climb in my carriage and I want, I want rid of you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Daniel speaks up. Look. Look. Maybe, maybe, uh, we could, uh, be, come to some sort of deal. Grimald, hit him in the head and then we'll run away. All right, here, I'll have this. Thirteen. <laughs> Four damage. It is a mighty crack to the head. You see blood start spurting out of this poor gnome's head as he hits the pavement with a sickening thud. Uh, I think you might have killed that guy, Grimald. Oh, sh- look, get him quick. Get him in the carriage. Quick now. Oh, uh, inside? Butler, oh. yes, grab him. Okay. Get him in the carriage. Okay. okay. Right, Butler, give me an agility roll to see how quickly you can get this body in the carriage. Twelve. It's somewhat fast, but you bundle this tiny corpse into the back of the carriage. As you do so, you notice that the inside of the carriage is very odd. First of all, all of the leather-lined seats face the same way, but in addition to this, the front seat, of which there is only one, resembles a large winged lounge chair, and it faces a planed wooden surface with a number of switches and dials on it. Another strange oddity also catches your eye. A miniature wheel appears to be jutting out of this board of buttons and knobs. It looks like that of a water vessel, a tiny ship's wheel, the size of a man's head. Except, behind the positions where you might put your hands, are two paddles on hinges. I do not understand this. What the? Stop looking around, man. Uh, look, just lock the door. Lock the door, all right? I, I, I don't know how to do Is there a key to lock? Is there a lock for a I key? I don't know. Is there anything on the inside? Look, look we just, we, we've unfortunately committed gnome aside. I'm going to search the gnome to see if I can find some keys. You dig around in the gnome's pocket and, and pull out a bunch of keys. Sure. Right, now try and lock the door. Okay. Um. The butler, you go up and lock the door. There we go, right. So now we're kind of locked in the crime scene, but... A lot of blood in here. L- yeah, there is a... Yeah. Uh, oh, sh- he's, he's... Um, could you take him off me? It's pretty gross. I'm just going to... Right, let me just prop him up in this little chair at the back. Sorry, mate. Now he just looks like he's sitting here. Ain't nobody going to suspect the thing. Exactly, he's had too much drink. If anyone asks, he's had too much drink. Too much to drink, so his head head started bleeding. Exactly. <laughs> he's had a skinful, and now his uh, brain's exploded. All right? I'm not sure that... I mean, yes, perfect. Right, now let me have a go at this. I have, uh, I've, tr- I've used a few uh, carriages in my time. I'm going to sit in the front chair and just go, Giddy up. Giddy up. 
You sit in the front seat saying this to this board of buttons and knobs. And at this point, Daniel, as much as a skull can give an annoyed look, he does. And he just goes, really? You got a better idea, Daniel? Why don't you try, uh, I don't know, uh... All right, I see what this one does then. I'm going to press the first button, I see. Okay, give me a luck roll. Uh, oh, 19. As you press the button, the carriage starts chugging. It sort of comes to life, and you feel this sort of rumbling beneath you. And then, as you do so, it sort of backs up as if the horses, which aren't there, have been told to reverse. <laughs> see? What, what is happening, sir? Ye of little faith, Daniel. I think I've fixed it. I've done something, we're moving. Now your carriage stands in the middle of the road, pointing towards the south end of the town. Okay, uh, that was pretty good. Got any more? Got any more of those moves? Uh, right, so now we need to figure out which one is forward. Um, press, press this one. You point over to the, to the, uh, you point over sort of in the general direction of the, of the plane of buttons, and as you do so, you notice that there is a, a mass of red buttons. Any of those will do, I think. What are you standing around for? How the hell would you know, man? Um, I'm going to reach around and press one of the red buttons. The carriage races forward with an almighty star. Your heads jerk backward as this thing bolts up to the speed of an arrow within a second. You're racing through the streets of Maven Township with such ferocity, it feels like your trousers might fall off. It's all too late before you realise you're about to come quite familiar with the side of a building. Grimald, give me a reflex save to avoid crashing. <laughs> Six. Jerking the wheel of steering sharply to the right, you smash the carriage into the building, knocking a good solid chunk off both the side of the wagon body and the building. <laughs> Whoops! Um, I haven't used one of these before, so give me a break, will ya? Uh. A gaping hole lets cold night air gushing into the cabin. Still, you race through the streets of Maven now, and many a folk are diving aside as the motorised carriage bowls over the cobbles like a runaway bull. But one woman has not the agile feet to dive aside. An old decrepit crone stands in the way as you blast forward. Grimald, another reflex save. Oh no! No! Move out the way! Get out of the way! Just hit her, man! <laughs> uh, ten. The woman is utterly destroyed. Her old bones get fed under the auto wagon like a pile of blood-filled twigs, leaving a long red lumpy trail behind you as you soar forward. Now, as you hurtle on, you see you're on a straight downward hill flanked by rows of stony houses on either side. It does appear, however, that you are now headed towards some wilderness and thus exiting Maiden Township. Well, that's one way to make an exit, ain't it, boys? Um, this, uh, the amount of murders we've done recently is a bit, um, you know. Oh, that reminds me, actually. Jets in the body, butler. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, try and pick up the gnome and lob him out the hole in the wagon. Give me a strength roll to hurl him out. <laughs> Crit fail. You pick the gnome up and hurl him into the front window of the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> there is blood all over it, oh. causing Grimmel to be unable to see. Oh, God. what are you doing? Sorry, sir. It's a bit bumpy. You goddamn ass. I've got a dead gnome in my eyes. Suddenly, you feel a bump on the front of the car. It sounds very similar to when you ran over that woman 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Whoops. Can I try... <laughs> <laughs> can, can I try and st- um, stick my head out of the hole and then direct Grimble? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Butler, you lurch forward over the seats and into the front. You now poke your head out the front, f- feeling the gusts of wind in your face. Your mouth now resembles a gigantic gaping sack as it gets filled with wind. <laughs> what can he say? <laughs> what can he say? Butler, now's not the time to start falling apart. <laughs> Say something, man. Can you get straight or what? Okay, okay. You roll down a hill and through a flimsy sign, which reads, now leaving Maven, and into some verdant meadows, which you pass in a matter of minutes before entering into some thicker wilderness. Your new vehicle makes laughably short work of these wild lands south of Maven. Right, can I clean, try and clean some of the blood out of Grimm's way? Yeah, give an intelligence roll to use your butlering skills. 16. With a 16, you manage to clean most of the blood off. Grimble can now see quite well out of the front. There. Is that better? That's better, mate. <laughs> you see some tall, coniferous countrysides pass by the window of the auto wagon like a blur. And Butler, you're looking at the side of the auto wagon, moving your eyes constantly to try and keep up and catch sight of interesting landmarks. 
and now treacherous journeys that once made blisterous abominations of your feet and ruinous destructions of your shoes and made child's play as you glide noisily over them without incident. Sir. This thing's brilliant! This is... amazing. I feel alive! This is, this is the best thing since sliced bitches. <coughs> Daniel, did I say that out loud? Look, you're accessory to murder, all right? Calm it down. <laughs> Look, I did... I. Uh, oh. You were the actual accessory of murder. That is a very good point. You're a weapon, my man. All right, we're all, we all did something bad today. <laughs> Somebody ran over a woman. Grimald, I'm looking at you. Look, look, look. It's not my fault if she gets in the way of my incredibly fast machine. Not your machine? You stole it? No, we borrowed it. We yet. stole it. Borrowed it. Well, actually, he's dead now. So he don't mind. <laughs> it's ours. He don't need no wagon See, anymore. Back in the pub, I said, I said to you guys, you know, you do one murder and suddenly the gloves are off. Look at it. Today, you killed a gnome. Um, then, which is basically a child, if you think about it. Actually, mm. my gloves are still on. True. Ah, uh, butler. They're always on. You're not the, not the smartest butler in the box, are you? Look, my two buddies. What's done is done. There's no point looking behind. Let's just concentrate on what's in front of us. No, we can't look behind, because there's a lot of blood back there. Yeah. yeah. So, can, what, does, what does this button do? What? I'm just going to reach over and just press another red button. The carriage speeds up even further, going incredibly fast. Oh, <laughs> After a long while of barreling through the countryside and weaving in and out, avoiding the thicker and denser parts of shrubbery or built up betreed areas, you once again come to some plains, but not just any plains, the biggest, most gargantuan expanse of tall trees you have ever seen in your life. It's gold, warm, reassuring, and goes on for an age until it ends at the horizon, where you see a hill, and at the top of the hill, a structure. Both of you give me a perception check. Crit fail. 15. So Grimald, you're trying to see this, but there just happens to be some sort of more chunkier bits of blood attached to the windscreen, just where the hill is. Yeah. Um, however, the butler, you, you get a good look at this, just craning your head round to see what this structure is in the distance. It, it, and although its details are hard to make out from such a great distance, you think you can make out tall, pointy spires, connecting walkways, huge main sections. It's a castle. What from this far away look like tiny dots of life, possibly birds, encircle the tallest steeple. Sir, is that it's that Castle Ravenloft? I don't know, I can't see anything. All I can see is it bloody gnome entrails. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me get that for you. Can you see it better now? Oh that up there? Yes. Well I'm all supposed to know, Daniel? Uh well, big gothic castle, probably birds circling the top. Yep. I'm willing to put put my uh, my unlife on it. We got a bingo here or what? I, I'm thinking a bingo, man. We got a bingo. That looks like Castle Raven after me. Your destination is finally in sight. The castle belonging to the man who may be able to decode the Book of Planes and use it to send you home. You both gaze at Strahd's magnificent black castle, which pierces the sky over in the horizon. Both of you, give me another perception check, please. Um, a two. And a ten. Then the structure starts to go upwards rapidly, and you realise that while you were looking at the magnificence in the far away, you have driven off a cliff edge. Well, to be more accurate, driven into a chasm the size of a city, which sat several feet below the tall grass. Your auto wagon spins slowly forward as you plunge downward, and as it does so, you notice that the entire mega chasm is filled with a horrific opaque pink mist which makes all manner of strange loud noises that bore into your brains. The sound of sloshing, mechanical whirring, clicking and screaming can be heard from within the mist, and you smell the familiar sickly sweet metallic smell that you recall from the last time you were eaten by this hideous gas. Oh dear. I think we screwed the pooch on this one, fellas. Yep. Well, I gotta say, uh, seeing as we're about to die or whatever, thanks for nothing. I have to what? say. Well, it sucks. Oh. You smashed my body off, you put me on a stick, and uh, now, we, now we're falling into the mist. We're gonna die. We're gonna die, and it's all your fault. You never got me to the destination. We never did anything fun. We delved down dungeons. We nearly got eaten. We, we had uh, loads of fun. 
When? With the berries? So, so might I just interrupt and, yeah. and make a suggestion? Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps you could perhaps use a perhaps levitate, perhaps. Oh, yeah, of course! <laughs> As we think we we're all dead. I mean, I'd rather not have a view of any more magic, but if we don't be quick, I'm sure we'll be, um, I'll be eating the, this, this, this whole thing. Right you are, butler. Let's see if I could uh, save us again, eh? And Daniel, we'll pick this conversation up after, mate. And if we do die, sir, I love you. Uh, oh, that's not die, all right? Levitate! Can't believe you just said that. 21. Suddenly, the carriage that you find yourselves in stops in midair, and you're floating on an invisible rising platform. You're welcome. Oof! Wow. Shut up. What was that then, Daniel? No, forget what I said. What did you say a minute ago, Butler? Yeah, what did you say a minute ago, Butler? Uh, something about a... Uh, something about the levitate spell. I was merely meant to it as a... Hey, guys, what's that over there? Uh, oh. And as you guys look out the window, you can see that as you're floating upwards on this rising invisible disc, a tendril of smoke has come out of the mist and is following your vehicle upwards. Oh, shh. What is that? Well, it ain't any good time. That's what I... I... <laughs> sir, sir, dodge the smoke. I'll try. Mm. Give me an intelligence roll to see if you can move your levitate platform and dodge the smoke, okay? So, the smoke writhes up and encircles your wagon, grasping it like a python and then pulling you down. That's not good. No. Bugger off. Please. And then just bugger off. And then it yanks you beneath the smoke. As you drop through the gas, the sickly smell intensifies to the full-on smell of rotting, and your vision twists and distorts. Your insides feel as if they're being stretched paper thin and the feeling of falling becomes so excessive that it's almost too much to bear, which is fitting because you erupt through to the other side of the blush cloud and into darkness, your wagon no longer spinning, but pointing nose first toward a rocky grassy ground near the chasm's walls. Your descent appears to be somehow faster than before. Uh, 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 quick, sir! Do something about it! Jump jump out and do another levitate! I wish we had another wizard on the team. Oh, I'll try! All right, everybody jump after three. One, two, three. Go! Uh, Levitate! Uh, 17. As you all leap from the wagon, opening the doors and barreling out, Grimald, you affect yourself with the spell, but it's not powerful enough to affect Butler too. Butler falls face first into the ground, smacking it with an almighty boff. <laughs> he takes nine damage Ooh. as he cracks to the ground. Ooh, Daniel, that looked nasty. Oh, that weren't good. Ooh, that looked nasty. But isn't this nice, us floating down there together? Yeah, it's not bad, actually. Look at look how big his butt looks from this angle. Um, um... You all right, Butler? My face full of hurt. He's all right. And then, coming swooping past you through the air, the auto wagon. And it's heading straight for Butler. Butler, give me a reflex save. Butler, move! 21. You roll out of the way just as it crashes to the ground with an almighty destruction. There's a moment of disorientation. Then opening your eyes, you look at the cabin and you can see soot, oil, dislodged seats and masses of broken glass. Then, at the front, which looks like a crumpled up al kebab wrapper, a small fire starts up. I'm gonna run away. Give me an agility roll. 20. Butler, you run away from this as you flee from the embuggered mess of a vehicle as fast as you can and can feel an immense heat as the jalopy explodes behind you. And then just as Butler gets away, Grimald and Daniel land elegantly next to him. There we go. That was alright, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah, pretty easy. Same can't be said for old butler. <laughs> you alright, mate? <laughs> How you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't he move quick, though? You see him running like that? <laughs> he looked like a little bitch. <laughs> you see? <laughs> it's not, he was, not uh, very funny. He was oh so scared, God. man. That's not very funny. <laughs> you should have seen it, though, man. It way was that... from where we were. <laughs> Almost time. You were a good sport. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't. You didn't. Oh, man. <laughs> right, you are, sir. Well done, Butler. Very well done. You should have seen the look on your face, man. Oh, man. Oh, oh good one. You got punked. Yeah. But you're not dead, so, you know, look on the bright side and all that. Looking around now by the smouldering wreck, you see that you stand by the chasm wall at the top of a verdant slope 
dotted with bright wildflowers and radiant fluffy trees that wear violet coloured leaves atop grey trunks. This hill declines shallowly for the length of two sports ball courts before reaching what looks to be a small villagium comprised of round dusty wood buildings simply plonked around the grass amongst the trees. It's quite nice down here. Um, no, um, you say nice. It's Raven laughed, man. Any minute now you're going to get eaten by yeah, a no, goddamn no. grew or something. No, I was off it, you know. <laughs> no doubt certain death's on its way. But look, it is quite pretty. Oh, look, over there. A small settlement. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's probably going to be like, I don't know, populated by fucking, I don't know, ravenous beasts or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, probably. Well, I suppose we can't go back up through the mist. Well, I'll tell you what then. I know, I know I'm asking a lot, Butler, but you are the sneakiest of all of us. How about you go and check out what's going on over there with your sneaky ways and uh, come back and uh, report on uh, the old sit joke. Right you are, sir. Yeah? Might I suggest hiding, uh... I'm going to go behind that big rock. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to pop Daniel up as a little, little, uh, little spy. Yeah? Right you are, sir. Lovely. So, Grimmel, do you head over to a big rock and momentarily hide behind it near the village? And then, Butler, you're going to sneak in and have a look around. Yep, using my sneak silently. Got 28. <laughs> you approach the village, quiet as a shadow. You see that the huts so far as you can call them huts, are expertly crafted, huge and perfectly round. The smoky wooden panelling that makes up the walls of these artisan dwellings are completely flush, made to the most precise of measure, as clean as a whistle. The windows are stained glass, the colours divided by bright metal muntins. The split shake roofs all come to a point equaling the height of the nearby trees, and oddly there are no roads collecting the houses, they are simply sit amongst the grass and trees. And as you come closer, you notice that all the front doors and windows are shut, and none of this hamlet's occupants can be seen outside, except for two people, who you can see off to the side near some of the cabins. And you stand behind one of these huts, observing these two people. They haven't seen you yet, and you can see that one is a tall slender man, whose appearance is elven. He has pointed ears and long braided blonde hair. He wears studded leather hunter's armour and a grim determined expression. He carefully stalks around, gazing between buildings as if looking for something. In his hands you see a bow at the ready, held with an arrow notched against the string. His companion is a pixie who is about 14 inches tall and floats using pink glowing wings just behind the man's left shoulder. She wears a suit of tiny chainmail and is carrying a dagger which for her is a two-handed sword. Her high barnet of red hair tied above her head is messily and hastily done, and she too wears a downturned look of bleakness. One thing that is hard to miss, however, is that both of these people have skin as black as pitch, as dark as the night sky, and as colourless as a shadow, something that you have seen on no elf before. As they stalk around carefully, looking between buildings, they, as I said, haven't noticed you yet. They are looking around lifting up um, lifting up uh, bin lids, looking in windows, looking around bushes, things like this, with a massive air of suspicion, always got their weapons at the ready. And it appears that they're looking for something, or someone. I'm going to sneak back to Grim and Daniel. Okay, give me a sneak silently roll. Uh, 20. Butler picks his moment, and then skirts right back to Daniel and Grim. And that's why, Dan... Yeah, I don't do that yeah, anymore. Exactly. Because it made me go funny. And, oh, here he is. Hello. 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 What's up, man? Hey, how did it go? Up on me. Um, on. I saw some um, sort of really dark people. All right. Well, well, come on, man. Come and on, they're, man. And they're sort of looking for stuff. I don't know what it is. Looking for stuff, eh? Should we ask them about this place? Well, do they look aggressive? Or do they look like they... Hey, wait, uh, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He, he says you see seen dark people. And the first thing you say is, do they look aggressive? What the hell is wrong with you, man? No, I meant like, are they holding weapons, or...? Yes. Okay, all right, all right, that doesn't do well. (laughs) See what I'm saying, Dan? All right, fair enough. So, so they got weapons? Yes. Are they, are they, are their their weapons at the ready? Um, yes, definitely yes. Right, keep your voice down, you idiot. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. So it's safe to say that they're looking for a fight. I don't think so, because they are lifting things up and... Should we just go over there and up them up? What, you just uh, you, you just kill people for no reason now? Well, no, not normally I don't, but I've spilled a bit of blood today and it reminds me of the old days. And <laughs> Grimmel, this ain't a dungeon. 
They ain't that just they ain't put there just for to be killed to guard the treasure. No, you know what you're I mean? right. You're this right. ain't no your cave golems. No, you're right. You're right. These are just dark people. Can't just dark kill them. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So we should go to say hello then. Um. Maybe, okay. they're, maybe they're reasonable. Might be reasonable. Okay. Just let's just let's just remember this little conversation we have just had, but just in case things do go a bit funny, because I'll be expecting an apology from you, Daniel. But I'm gonna listen to you. Look, you always got you always got to remember, people are people. You know what I mean? When you first met me, what did you do? You attacked me, you hit my body off. Now we're the best of friends. That's true. And things could have been different. I could have had my body. I could have been way more useful than just that thing to hit things with. Very true. And these two might be able to help us. Exactly. So, so let's let's go. As you say, have a word. They might be nice people. Yep. Bold as brass. Straight up there. If you want. Let's go then. You're the boss. All right, shall we, butler? You're right, you are, sir. Okay, let's go. You, the both of you stand up from behind the rock, and immediately as you do so, the tall, slender man points at you, and the fairy turns, and she's got her dagger at the ready. I'd like you both to give me a reflex save, please. Eleven. Sweet. Twenty-one. Grimmel. You are hit by an arrow in the shoulder. The Oof. slender man points at you and goes, <laughs> Daniel? What was that about him being friendly? <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, get uh, duck down again behind the rock. Yep. I now have a bloody arrow in my shoulder, mate. Oh is there a note attached to it? Maybe it says, hello, welcome to the village. Butler, uh, is there a note attached to this bolt that uh, is now lodged in my shoulder? No. No, just pain. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Daniel. Sorry about everything. Thanks a lot. Right, everyone roll initiative. <laughs> Grimald, you are up first. I'm going to get up, get up from back from behind the rock and go, <coughs> allow me to introduce myself. Flaming hands! Uh, so that's a 20. You jump up from behind the rock, casting flaming hands, and a big gout of flame burns the two individuals in front of you. Roll damage. 10 damage for the first uh, enemy, and 13 damage on the other one. Flaming hands! They are incredibly charred. And they start screaming. He put a bolt in my shoulder. I don't think they can understand you, man. Get back down behind the rock. Good idea. How dare you? Them, them, not you, sir. I was brilliant. Oh, good. I misunderstood me you. Me too. I, I thought you were being an ass. Sorry, there. I was late for response. Stop to talking. Oh, oh, Just oh. get your head down. Oh, oh, right you are, sir. As you sit there talking, you both look up, and suddenly you see that the elven man is peering over the rock. Uh, hello. He starts jabbing with a dagger. Unfortunately, both of you manage to avoid his attacks. Oh, yeah, no, not today. He's incredibly quick. Then you turn around, seeing that the pixie is also flailing at you. And Grim, you take another three damage <coughs> as she slashes you across the forehead. It's not very friendly, is it? Please stop hurting, my lord. Butler, it is your turn. Have at you. I'm going to take a swipe at the um, elf man. Cool, give me a melee attack roll. 14. <laughs> For damage. You slice him across the arm, and you see that he, st- he drops his weapon onto the floor. Now stop it. Now stop it. Surrender now. So I think we're past that. Next up is Grimald. Um, I'd like to um, hurl an insult at the pixie in pixie, because I can speak pixie, and then I'd like to follow that up by hitting her with Daniel like a baseball bat. So I go... <laughs> What the hell is going on? And then I swing Daniel. 19. <laughs> Three damage. You bat the pixie right in the pixie. She's only small. And then you notice her sort of spin backwards as you smack her. And then she sort of regains her composure and begins floating again. Next up is going to be their turn. You see the slender elf man from the other side of the rock start to bugger off. He's running away. He's incredibly scared of the both of you. Ha! <laughs> That's it. That'll teach you. You need to work on your introductions, mate. Now only the pixie has left. She stays to fight. And as she lifts up her dagger, a woman dressed in elegant red robes leaps from behind one of the huts and into the fray. She holds an open leather-bound tome in one hand and a dagger in the other. Her long, straight blonde hair flows behind her as she makes herself known. Her skin is the same dark tone as the other two, and yelling something in a foreign tongue, you see the pages of her spellbook flutter as if a strong wind is taking them. Then the tome itself emits an explosive blast of magic, and both of you are going to need to give me a reflex save to dodge this flame. 19. 14. Good 
both dodge out of the way of this gigantic explosion that Whoa. this conjurer casts forth. Bah. The pixie, however, is not quite as lucky. In a blast of glitter, she is destroyed instantly. And now this mysterious woman stands there in the aftermath of this explosion. Please don't hurt us. Hello. Do not worry. I am on your side. Come, let us not stay out in the open. I will tell you what is happening here. Oh, okay. Lead okay. the way. She takes off in the direction of a collection of dwellings and beckons you to follow. As she does so, she constantly keeps a low posture and a light foot, all the while her head darts from side to side, looking for aggressors. She keeps her dagger at her side, in her left hand, and her spellbook in her right hand. She walks forward and upon reaching the houses, skirts between them and round the back, where there's a light covering of trees and bushes, which may provide some privacy. Nadu, duck down and we may converse. Okay, well, I don't normally really need to duck much. Yes, you are quite the short one. I am, yeah. But duck down anyway. It's okay. the way when talking in secret. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, nice to meet you. My name is Rachel. This is Lord Grim. Nice to meet you, Lord Rachel. Grimmleton. Yes. I've, I've heard of this place, Grimmleton. What? Yes, Frabletron C, no? Yeah, how do you know? I read about it in a book. Oh, did you hear about me? Uh, well, I heard that uh, there is a noble who lives there who likes to party too much. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> Guilty is charged. <laughs> well, anyway, nice to meet you. Likewise. Anyway, I will tell you what is going on here. Please uh, do, we're a little confused. We are the Arak, but for those who know of our kind will ineffectually call us the Shadow Fae, because we are dark and are day sleepers. This chasm you find yourselves in is our mentor, our hidden home. You see, before we came here to Ravenloft, our race came to be in a realm called the Shadow Plain, and this was a place of such demonic nightmares it makes Ravenloft look like a relaxing booze cruise in a Flabletron Sea. Let me explain, the Arak are not like the golden fey creatures you have in your world, such as the elves and the fairies. The fey creatures you know of have always been since the dawn of existence. But we were created by demons, for no other purpose but to be enslaved, to be put in chains and whipped until we resembled mincemeat. And for what? So the high demons of the Shadow Plain did not have to fetch their own food and drink, fight their own wars, or torture their own detractors. Many of us became monsters, burned villages, destroyed children, all for the promise that if we pleased Demon King Anatolia, that one day we will be given our freedom back. That's horrible. Yes, hundreds upon hundreds of years went like this, with no such thing ever happening, until there was a woman, one of us, an Arak, Stephanie van der Weyer. She was brave and stupid enough to do something about our situation. Over many months she would build up the demon's trust in her, doing any awful thing they asked, and carrying out orders with remarkable enthusiasm. She would execute her own without a second thought, spy on us, and report everything back to her superiors, and was rumoured to even have a relationship with a demon. Oh. Every Arak person in the Shadow Plain hated her for this. She was the most reviled person in our history, even above the Demon King. But she had a plan. It was all in the name of a greater good, you see, this trust she had raised, these people she had sacrificed, the reputation she had intentionally sullied for herself, all ended with her asking Demon King Anatolia for access to the Grand Library, claiming it was for recreational use, and Anatolia granted her wish. But she was not reading romantic fiction in there, oh no. It was occult magic, plane shifting on massive, massive scales. Every spare moment she had, she would be in the stacks, poring over great scrolls and books, researching rituals, rites and spell casting. Then, many years later, Stephanie was out in Saloth Sa, the Black Desert, and she had been put in charge of the construction of a new Doom Tower. She had almost every Arak in the Shadow Plain working on the hideous building, and as she stood atop the half-built, 400 meter tall construction site, she produced a dark tome from her robes, and with a flick of the wrist and a screaming chant, nearly every Shadow Fae in the realm vanished into a cloud of pink mist leaving that plane of immeasurable suffering behind. And now, Stephanie is our queen, ruling over us here in our Nementhor, which we call the Shadow Rift. This chasm is paradise, 
Yet every single person who falls down here claims that Ravenloft is hell. But we disagree. For us, it is heaven compared to what we have faced. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't want to be beating that Stephanie any time soon, do you know what I mean, but yeah, <laughs> so that's all right, exactly. hold that bar, did she? Yeah. <laughs> well, she is, <laughs> she is, ex- no, 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 you misunderstand, she is very kind. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm sure she is, and quite clearly crazy. To, um, she had to have a certain level of craziness to take on the demons. Oh, yeah. To do what she did. Sense, yes. yeah, but yeah, yeah. she was extremely kind, self-sacrificing, and a great woman. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not taking that away from her at all. So Just uh, methods are a bit, um, woohoo. You know what I mean. So, so what is your name, may I ask? Rachel. I said this already. Please pay attention. Well, I was uh, transfixed with the story. Eh? Um... Quite. Anyway, the people who attacked you. They have been afflicted with some kind of illness. Everyone here has got it, apparently. They babble incoherently, attack anything that moves with great ferocity. Well, yes, that was quite vicious, uh, the attack we just had. Oh, yeah, as you can still see. Oh, sorry, let me take care of that. Would you mind, Butler? The the arrow? Yes. You're you're going to take it out? Yes. Uh, Allow me to please look away. And she turns away. (laughs) Oh, 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 no, why? Oh, how, why did it take so long? So oh, thanks, Butler. Anyway, Rachel. So okay. So look, we need to cure the illness. Okay? Yeah. And I believe you do not want to stay here. Well, we're trying to get home. Exactly. Yes. Now, if you wish to leave the Shadow Rift, then Queen Stephanie's magic will be able to help you. Excellent. She will also be able to heal the people. I see. So we both need to travel in the same direction. Yes. Or in other words, you want old Grimmy to save the day. Well, in some ways, yes. Because you will not be let into Queen Stephanie's castle without somebody of the Arak with you. And I believe I am that somebody. Perfect. So, keep me alive and everything will be tickadiboo. Sounds, seems legit. I think that means good, so I will agree. We look after each other, we both get what we're looking for. We are in agreement, yes, Nadu? Yes. Um, yes. Yes, we are. Nadu. What are you saying? I, do, I don't know if she said it. Forgive me, Rachel. Nadu? What does that mean? It means outsider. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, if uh. you wish, I will change it to Ibrath. This means friend. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's nice. So, Ibrath, the Queen's Castle is to the south. But to get there, we need to pass through the remainder of the village. This, okay. This will not be easy. Further on... You will find more homes like this. And she taps gently on the side of the building you hide behind. There will be more of my people who have been taken by the miasma. They will be hostile. They will talk nonsense and will be hungry for your blood. Do not be afraid to preserve your life. They are not themselves. What's some more arrows then? Is that what we're saying? Oh well, come in. Suppose we better crack on then. Try, Butler, try not to let me get shot with any more arrows will you mate right you are I didn't enjoy that not one bit yes let us go lead on Rachel Heading south from your secluded conversation spot, you skulk up to an area which appears to be some kind of communal eating area. There are many huts, houses and treery as before, but in the centre of all this are rows and rows of thick grey wooden tables which are somewhat under the cover of looming tall trees. Looks like there is not much going on here, Um, I guess we just go through, I don't know. Push on do we? Both of you give me a perception check. Crit. 12. Butler, you notice that in the trees looming over the thick grey wooden tables, attempting to stay hidden, are two short, stout, grey-skinned men. They don't look like the ones you've seen before. They're kind of dwarvish in nature, both of them holding folded up nets and spears. Guys. Yeah? I spotted some people in the... Where? Some some grey people up there. What? I? Wait a minute. Do not say grey people. That is... Come on, we we uh, just call us the Arak by our proper name. That is, uh, there is no need for racism. Uh, uh, sorry, 
Um, yeah, come on, man. Have some sensitivity. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know that that would have been a racist term. Um, I did to offend. That, well, anyway, there are it, some... It is ar- fine. Don't worry. But uh, wait, wait, what? You're saying they're up in the trees? Yes, they're, they're up in the trees. What they, have, they have a spear and a net. Uh, I, what? Well, well, what is the plan of action? Well, should we just pretend we haven't seen them, or...? Oh, they want to go Well, the well then they will just pounce on us like wolves. But maybe we could get the upper hand that way. I could set the tree on fire. Good idea. Allow me to uh, show you my magics. He, he says that with a sly grin on his face. And then wait, just go, wait, 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 wait. Oh, right, yeah. I will assist. Thank you. We will do this at the same time. Let's pretend that we don't know they're there until the last minute, and then we just set the tree on fire. Okay. Sound good? Very good. Right. After three. Le- three, two, two one. Twenty-seven. Flaming Flame hands! <laughs> you both blast this tree into oblivion. You see it explode in a gigantic gout of flame, and both of these guys are set on fire, and they just turn to ash immediately, as does the tree. Well. Well, that was easy. There you go. Uh, 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 well, I have to hand it to you. High five. Thank you. Sorry if my hand was a bit hot. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that was uh, that was efficiency at its best. I am impressed with you. Thank Nadu. you. I, 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 this was this was say uh, this was a good day. Yeah, I'm, not I'm, for them. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> I have killed my own people. I am ashamed. Oh, yes. I'm impressed of you too, Lord. F- well, thank you, Butler. <laughs> thank you. You guys are cold-blooded murderers. Uh, yeah, but look, you're not in a net now, Daniel, so you're welcome. Exactly. Uh, you know, I'd rather I'd rather, uh, ra- I'd rather murder somebody than be in a net. There you go, you're learning. Or, or have a spear in your eye socket, you know. Yes, exactly. 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 Self-preservation. Fuck those guys. Get they, used to it. They were going to jump us. Exactly. That's, and that's and now we mindset. turned them into ash, we yep. turned the tree into ash. Yep. Happy days. Happy days indeed, stalking skull. Right, so shall we move on? I think so, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, everything feels a little bit better. Walking further south, the hill continues down and deeper into the chasm. You leave the village behind and enter some strangely coloured wildlands. The trees here are the same purple colour as in the village, but among the bases of their grey trunks you see the bushes glowing with blue berries, red mushrooms with gold dotted patterns, two headed squirrels scampering past, and there's a faint smell which is unlike anything you've whiffed before, but it smells like sweet and spicy lavender. This pleasant aroma waves along every time a small wind pervades this idyllic mini forest. You can see the end of this tiny forest, however, only some hundred feet away. The pathway through winds down to an exit, where you can see it leads to more plains on the other side. What's this little lovely woodland called then? Well, I am Stephanie the Queen. She wanted uh, the people here to have somewhere to write poetry. They were always complaining that uh, the, 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 the elven folk, the fae, they, they have to write poetry among the trees and the woodlands. And so there is not much space here down in the chasm, so she, she made a tiny forest for them. It's enchanting. Exactly. The mushroom's edible. It is lovely down here. It is lovely. It the mushrooms are nice. edible, but only if you want to go on a, um, how do you say, a, a, cab- a cabrinthor. Uh, I, um, it is where you go. How about your mind machine? A psychedelic journey. Oh. Yes, yes, a psychedelic journey. Bag a few of them up, will you, Butler? <laughs> right, you Might are, come sir. Might handy later. What about the berries? The berries, um, well, they are just berries. They grow, but they taste lovely. Perfect. If you wouldn't mind, Butler, bag a few of them up as well, mate. Right, Don't go mad. Are, I mean, people here they need stuff to eat. Oh, yeah, no, If right. we cure the miasma... They will need sustenance. Take, okay. take a few, but you, you know, don't don't take a dip piece. Okay. So, yeah, just take a few, quite a few, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. But lovely. Thank you. <coughs> the butler, you walk up and start start um, filling your pockets with these large red and gold mushrooms and a few glowing berries, 
and stash them into your pockets. You've got a few fistfuls of each. When you're quite done, hopefully we can move on through the forest and, and get to the castle. It's quite nice here, though. It, it is nice, but it is not a place to spend a fucking eternity. Yeah, true. We've got to get home, haven't we? Got to get home. All right, yeah. You bagged up. You bagged up, my butler and buddy. You bagged up. All right, you are, sir. Yep, good. Let's continue then, shall we? Lead the way, old uh, mysterious lady. My name is Rachel. How uh, many times? I know, but I like to. Uh, I like to use adventure in terms. <coughs> right. Okay. Oh, guide. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> she she continues on walking ahead of you, and you guys follow, reaching the other side of the forest and looking to your left. You can see a vast waterfall whose origin is somewhere up and out of the shadow rift. The river running from the waterfall runs down the hill which slopes ever on further into the canyon's lush plains which here are dotted with many oryx and ibex which nibble at the grass and wildflowers while they hop about playfully. Beside the waterfall there is a stump driven into the ground. Attached to this a heavy rope and attached to that a small rowboat, big enough for around five men. The boat is made from dark ashen wood. You see but one pair of oars sitting lazily inside the craft. Ah, water. Not my best friend. You do not know how to swim? Not very well, no. Don't let the scows deceive you. Yes, I was going to ask, why do you have the appearance of a fishman? Ah, it's a long story. I've also got the smell of a fishman, I've been told. Yes, I, uh, it is quite unpleasant. This I, is why I stand five metres away from you. I understand. I've got used to it. I upset a frog god a long time ago. You upset a frog god? Uh, yeah. Yeah, ba bug ba bills <clears throat> Right. I mean, I ask no questions. You tell me no lies. That's right. We'll leave it there, shall we? Anyway, it is as my uh, grandfather used to say. Oh, yeah? What's that translate to, then? It means the frog with no legs cannot swim. <laughs> so, we shall get in the boat, yes? I believe so. Oh. Look, you are welcome to walk across the plains. I just believe it would take much longer. No, no, no. I'll, I'll get over my f f fear. It's fine. If we get in the boat, it will t hopefully take us there in a matter of minutes. Perfect. All right, well, but don't rock the boat too much. All right, mate, you know I'll get a bit sick. Yes, sir. I'm going to get in and close my eyes, that's all right. Actually, um, closing your eyes makes it worse. Does it? Okay. Oh, I'll ask to keep my eyes open then. Can I get in first? Actually, no, I'll get in last. Can you, can you, can you carry me in once you've got, all got in? You people, you, you do a lot of talking, don't you? Yeah. It's the way of the traveller. Yeah. Yeah. Raconteur, I am. Right. Anyway, go on, in the boat, in your pop. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and carry him in. <laughs> so I've got to lift him up first. <laughs> okay, give me a strength roll to lift your master up. Uh, 17. You lift him up. Hey! <laughs> and then you mount the boat. It shakes somewhat as you get in. <laughs> and you plonk him down gently into the boat. There we are, sir. Thank you. Then you see Rachel, your new Shadow Fae friend, step into the boat. And she's like, well... I am not going to be rowing. You see, my arms, they are more uh, attuned to spell casting than rowing. Yeah, I'll get Fine. that. I'll get what you're saying. Yeah, I'm Fine. a bit like that. Oh, nice of you to volunteer. <laughs> yes, Butler. butlers, they are they are good rowers, I hear. Uh, very good rowers. If I had, arms. If I had a butler, I would have him do the rowing. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a built brick house. He is. He is. He is. Uh, look, oh, look at those arms. Come on, butler. Watch out, there's a vein pumping. Oh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, oh, so strong. Row his arms. Right, come on, row. Okay, give me a strength roll to row. <laughs> 19. It's an awkward start at first, ha having to row two people with just one person's strength. But after a good few yaks on the oars, you launch the boat from near the plunge pool and away from the waterfall. Before long, the flow of the river is carrying you down and through the valleys of the Shadow Rift. And there is no longer a need for the oars. You feel the syrupy breeze on your faces as you gently but rapidly flow down the stream. Well, this is nice. One of the better boat rides I've been on. Very nice. You've been on some bad ones in your life? Oh, yes. Many. Yep, my castle got dropped into a bloody sea. That was not very nice. I had to use a piece of wood. But a castle um, being dropped into an ocean can hardly be considered a boat. No, 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 we made a boat out of a gable-edged roof after it had been dropped into the sea, you see. <laughs> a 
every time you tell me a story from your past, it only raises more <laughs> questions about you, my friend. Oh, there's you lots to know about old Grimmy. I've been you, on this you, earth for a long time. You annoyed a frog god. You yep. used a gabled edged roof as a raft. Yep. Yeah, you I were a dinosaur. And you call me mysterious. <laughs> oh, we have to have an ale one day and a fireside towel. Um, I'd like to uh, keep the oars in um, so I can steer it and to slow us down if nice. needed. Okay, yeah. Give me an intelligence roll. Five. With a five, you, you, you're you not doing the best job of steering, um, but the boat starts to round the corner and starts knocking against the banks. Um, it's it's not the best steering you've ever done. Everyone in the, the boat starts to sort of jerk around violently as the boat's knocking around the banks. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Bloody hell, mate! Oh, what did I say? Come on, do a better job than that. Feeling a little sick here. Yeah? There is water around my ankles. These boots are made from arak suede. Come on. Sorry. There, there is no repairing that. Do you owe me a shoe? No. Yes. N- n- it was your choice to get in the boat and you didn't want to row. No, no, no. Let's, let's, not, get, let's not get spiteful to each other, all right? We've all, we all got a common goal. Let's work towards it. Well, who is paying for the shoe? We'll get, I'll buy you a new shoe. Yes, well, or, well, buy me the shoe and just chuck it into the mist yep. when, when you are, are out. Perfect. I owe you a shoe on behalf of my butler's bad steering. Uh, sir... Uh, uh, well, you are. Come on, it was terrible. I got, I, I feel a little bit. I got watery mouth over here, feeling a bit sick. <laughs> As the boat's knocking against the banks and you're rounding the corners, you see that the river and the chasm's floor decline even further still for quite some miles, and you see the end of the canyon, which is very strange indeed. The river simply runs off into a chasm within the chasm that you already find yourself in. <laughs> However, rising up from within that almighty hole at the end of the canyon is a rocky pillar so huge it almost touches the pink mist that looms over this whole place, and a rope bridge as long as ten townships can be seen connecting the pillar's summit to the main portion of land. It is now, in the distance, huddled around the entrance to the rope bridge, that you see the villagers. There must be around two hundred. If not more, shadow fey, some armoured up and axed up like before, and you can see many more simply dressed ones holding p- pitchforks. There are fairies, tall slender fey, short ones, muscly ones, but the most alarming thing is the staggering number of them holding flaming torches and pitched forks. From experience, you know this is rarely a telltale sign of a birthday party. Well, that is not a very good sign. Um, have they seen us? Uh, you can see that you can see that Rachel sort of narrows her eyes, and she's like, "How the fuck am I supposed to tell from this distance?" <laughs> I thought we might have super eyesight. I am an Arak, not a fucking superhero. Okay. I may have spell casting abilities, but I do not have the see things from far away spell. Ah, uh, no, me neither. You know Butler. What? Yes. Can you spy those people. Are they can they see us. Both of you, give me a perception check. Six. Six. Both of your sixes, it's very, very difficult to tell at this point if they've seen you. What you can see is that they're kind of milling about um, in all different directions. Some of them are facing in your direction, but if they've seen you or not, it's anyone's guess at this point. Okay. What are we going to do, man? Come on. Well, they're in our way. They are in the way. They are in the way. You know, more importantly, at the end of this river, we're going to fall to our deaths. Oh. Again. Okay, well, let's try and avoid doing that, shall we? So, there's a lot of problems here at the moment. R- Rachel, you, you get a comment on the situation? Well, you, you see, it is quite uh, uh, it is quite magnificent, actually. You see, the boat at the end of the chasm, it drops into a portal and portals back to the beginning of the waterfall. It is great design. Magical, magical design. That's great. It is a transport system for getting to the castle. Okay, so we just carry on rolling down into the hole. Well, if we fall into the hole, we will be back at the top of the waterfall. Oh, I see. So, so don't go down the hole then. Yes, you have to jump out at the end. But okay. then there is the problem with the rope bridge. You see? Yeah. Uh, you, you need to get out and walk up the bridge, and all of the villagers stand there ready to sort of um, tear us to shreds. Right. So don't get torn to shreds. Don't fall down the hole. Okay. Those are two tips I can give you, outsiders. Thank you, sir. 
<coughs> yep. May I suggest something? Of course. As one of your... You're my most trusted advisor. As, as one of... Yes, as one of your most trusted advisors, I'd like to advise you something. I would very much like to receive said advisory notes. Could you perhaps <coughs> try a levitation and, and, and move us with the platform? Well, I've been known to cast a levitation or two. He winks at uh, Rachel. <laughs> Um, yeah, I could do it. I could, I could pop a levitate and see how it goes. So what are you saying? Wait till we get to the very edge, pop a levitate, float up, try to float over these falls straight to the castle. Well, why wait till the edge when you could do it now? Oh, but don't put me under pressure. Well, we have time then, sir. All right. I fail to see what is not pressurised about this situation. Alright, I'll get a little bit I get a little bit nervous under pressure. So let's just pretend that time is not of the essence so I can get into my magical zone. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, sorry, I didn't sorry. finish the spell. I'm sorry, I sneezed. Okay, oh, oh alright. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Right, okay, okay. Hey, hey got hay fever. Ah, oh, right, uh let me try again. Come on, Grimmy, you got this. <coughs> Rachel, it is it, it is the summer down here. We are getting ever closer to the edge. Shut up! Right here we go. Malevitates. <laughs> no, nope, said it wrong. <laughs> oh damn it! God damn it! Will you try harder, man? Levitate. Twenty-three. You you create a floating platform underneath the boat and, and to begin to lift out of the water and you're now floating towards the pillar where this rope bridge leads to the villagers have definitely noticed you now and they start to lob flaming torches pitchforks and all sorts of things at you everyone roll initiative grim you are up first sweet okay so i'm going to uh, yeah try and shoot the platform up um above the villagers now of range with a bit of luck okay give me an intelligence roll to yep. concentrate yeah eight you only manage to maintain the current height yeah. and you're just floating along, coasting towards the pillar at the okay. same height that you're at. Okay. You're about 40 feet above the ground. All right. The things are coming in thick and fast. Things are flying past you at this point. Everyone give me a reflex save to see if you can dodge them. Uh, nine. Ow. 22. Grim, you take one damage oh. as a rock hits you in the side of the head. Ah, oh, you oof. Ah. Rachel takes a pitchfork to the side. Ah. You're stupid. Stupid bastards! Ow! Sir, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm yes, fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you all right, Rachel? Yes, yes, I am fine. I, uh, it, that was quite painful, honestly. <laughs> it looks it. Next up is going to be the butler. I'm going to retaliate and throw the yours at them. Hey, <laughs> give me a missile attack roll. <laughs> First attack is a 14. Second attack was a crit fail. One damage. You th- you throw the first oar down and it sails into one of the villagers' heads, hitting him, but only seeks to annoy him further. The second one, with the fumble, you accidentally hit yourself in the head, <laughs> picking up the oar, doing one damage, oh, hitting no. yourself right in the temple. <laughs> Ow! Oh, bloody hell. Um, next up is going to be Rachel. You see her get out her toe. And the pages start to flutter, and she's like, Oh shit! And then the book starts to set on fire, and she's like, This was not supposed to happen! And then the book drops onto the floor, the boat starts to set on fire as you're flying through the air, and she's like, Um, slight problem, everyone. Oh, God! The spell, it did not go as I planned! No, you just set our boat on fire. Well, technically, I did not. The book The, the arcane forces of the universe. Okay. Did not align. No, 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 we're not blaming anyone. Let's just try and pull it out. Hang on. No, I've got... Sir, if we just step out the boat and push it off the, the levitation platform. I'm incredibly sorry. Okay, we'll put your book out. Grim, it's your turn. I'm going to get out of the burning boat, um, get to go to the edge of the platform and try and concentrate on moving this platform and hope that my friends deal with the burning boat. Intelligence roll. That's a 14. With a 14, you do manage to get it going. You're now progressing diagonally upward towards the top of the platform and you're making really good progress. Here we go. You're almost there. Okay, next up is going to be the villagers. They start lobbing volleys of shit at you, but it's absolutely terrible. Nothing seems to be reaching the dizzy heights after you start uh, start ascending upwards wicked and then it's going to be the butler's turn you're standing in the boat as it starts to really catch fire at this point cool uh i'm just going to get out of the boat for now and get ready to push it okay yeah you step out the boat and you put your arms on the side ready to push it off the edge but rachel is still inside 
Come on, Rachel, get out. <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. And then she she steps out the boat and then braces on the side of it. Right, help me push this off the side. Three, two, one. Ha! <laughs> she pushes the boat off the edge, sending this giant burning piece of wood smashing into a load of villagers. <laughs> you see below that there is an in- intense crash and a giant and a giant explosion of flame and 17 villagers just get destroyed <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and she's like, well, that is one way to do it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Next is going to be grim. Uh, right, so I've got to continue to concentrate on the platform and try and get it up to the top where we're trying to get to the rope bridge. Go for it. Right. 17, yeah. With a 17, you get to the top of the platform and you're there in incredible time. Behind you, you can see that many of the villages, those who still remain, start running up the rope bridge trying to get to you. Uh, and you guys have just uh, landed in front of a giant towering castle with a massive door in front of it. <sighs> you can see that you, you can see that Rachel um, steps off of the platform and runs towards the front door procuring a set of keys from her robes she inserts it into a giant keyhole in front of her turns it to the right and this drawbridge just goes down and she goes everyone get inside i like that i want one at my place come on let's go everyone inside go 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 You bolt inside, and once inside, she pulls a huge, huge lever with all of her might, and the drawbridge comes back up. Yes. It closes, and you're now in some castle grounds, which are cold and stony, and you have this um, immense sense of safety. Phew. At last. A (sighs) A bit of peace. I don't like their villagers much. Your people, they're a bit nasty, aren't they? It is, as I said, the, uh, the, uh... Illness. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that is what I said. Are they normally quite charming? They are normally okay. Okay. It is just there are events and things, you know. St- you know, shit happens. People turn different. Get crazy. Anyway. Anyway, in a bit, and then you see her turn around and she starts walking towards uh, in into the front of the castle. Her speed is accelerated. You can see that her her footsteps, like she's she's walking with an immense amount of purpose, uh, like towards the front door of the main house portion of the castle. Uh, so we're coming with you now. Take it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay. Right, come on. What? I don't know. She opens the front door, barely regarding you at this point, and and just leaves the front doors open. And she's she's several steps ahead of you, and she's barely even talking to you regarding you in any way. I look round to the butler and go, something seem a bit off all of a sudden. Completely. Daniel? Yeah, I don't like the way this bitch is acting. She's got all cold on us. So it's, I do it's per- like she don't even care about us. Nah. Well, look, we ain't got nowhere else to go. I don't really fancy going back and seeing them lot. No, I don't want to get pelted with more shit. No. So let's push forward, but let's just... Uh, Tread carefully, all right. You understand? Keep your hand on your on your weapon. Yeah. Uh, on your weapon at all times, boys. I don't like the cut of this uh, the cut of this uh, broad's jib. Yeah, I'll get you. And if I knew what a jib was, uh, you know. We, we, we yeah. Exactly. G- I have no idea, but I know what you're saying. I'll sniff what you're saying. Let's just keep our eyes peeled like bananas. Exactly. Yeah. Keep, keep your bananas peeled, boys. Let's go. Yeah. Right. Let's go. Going deeper into the castle, you begin to see all the signs of. Well, a castle. Its cold interior is typical of any fort structure, because they are known to be a bugger to heat. But it's not the long red carpets, fine wood furnishings, or giant imposing doors and walls that you notice first. As Rachel walks forward, marching with some purpose towards a staircase leading down somewhere, you begin to see the portraits on the wall are all of her. In the pictures, she wears a crown stands at a slight angle mostly and her face is hard and emotionless in some she is smiling though the ones where she holds a young baby but this baby is not a shadow fae it is a darkest shade of violet with thin wisps of black hair and glowing red eyes and a pair of tiny thin wings on its back your eyes turn then to the plaque beneath the inscription on one of these frescoes of her and the baby queen stephanie the first and young gwydion is she's the Queen! Stephanie! Stephanie! And at that, she stops walking for a second, 
and turns round, but barely turning round. She just turns round her head so she can just about see you from her peripheral vision. You're not Rachel, you are the Queen. Yes, you have rambled me. You are quite right. Well then, uh... Did you just use us? In a fashion, I suppose you could say so. You gotta help us get home. <sighs> I can't. What do you mean you can't? What? Look, you want to know the truth? Of course, y you know I am Queen Stephanie Van de Vire. All the events in the story I told you are true. I did sacrifice everything to bring our people here, including, as you can see, doing things with a demon I would rather not have done. But it does not make me love Gwydion less. He is still my son, and he is still beautiful. I have kept him under wraps this whole time. This allowed him from leaving the castle, but I knew the day would come where he would learn to use his wings. This morning, just before you came, I was out in that tiny forest. I was out there picking berries for Gwydion, and then he comes, so cute, bursting through the trees, laughing, so innocent. Anyway, who happens to be coming through at that exact time but Melandrak and Devan, the hunter and the pixie you met earlier? Well, they immediately open fire on my poor son. Can you believe it? Attacking a baby. Anyway, Gwydion immediately fled and flew up and out of the forest, but my path was blocked by those two idiots. I had no choice but to run and hide further north in the village. That is when they saw you, and I took my chats and started firing magic on them. I hoped, of course, Gwydion had gone home, so that is when I enlisted your help. I knew that Melandrak would have told the rest of the villagers about my son, and I was in big trouble. That my time here was over, so I needed your help. And yes, I lied, because why would you help a demon fucking scum like me? Anyway, now I want to see if my son is here. And she turns and starts walking again. Come on, follow. It's fine. As you follow her, she walks down into a basement, and she goes further and further down it, it, and you can see that it's very very dark down there there's this baby down there yeah. and she starts holding it in her arms and the baby is crying something chronic and you can see that it's got like a little arrow in its knee <gasps> you see what they have done I they do not understand they they hurt the baby they do not understand one bit poor child poor child poor, they, i i can he he would not stop crying do well. something we're helping look We've come across many people, many creatures in our times, but one thing we don't do is we don't judge. And if if he means us no harm, and you mean us no harm, then we mean you no harm. So you having a demon baby does not upset us, so don't think it. It was necessary to get them out of the shadow plane and into this place. Help me, please. My son is injured. Of course, we're helping. Help the baby. Okay, so what I would like the butler to do is to give the demon baby some berries um, out of the sack that I put it in. Yeah, and so you uh, give Gwydion some berries. Yeah. You um, take some berries out of your pocket and put them into the baby's mouth. It starts, it starts eating them happily, and even though it's in immense pain for a moment, the baby's crying subsides, and she's like, very good, very good. Right, you, I'm going to yank it. Agility roll. Uh, that's a 14. With a 14, you quickly yank the, the arrow out of the baby's knee. It is, it is a sharp and quick manoeuvre, but he's being distracted by the butler feeding it these delicious glowing berries. And it is a quick, sharp manoeuvre that a baby would barely notice. And suddenly, it's satiated. And the mother, Stephanie, starts to rock it in, uh, in her arms. And she's just like, expertly done. Uh, thank you very much. Given time, I believe this would heal. Uber wall fixed. I'll give her some berries in her hand so she can feed more to her son. Thank you, butler. You are quite the gentleman. Say we ain't so bad, are we? I am sorry that I had to use you. No, it's all right. It's all right. I understand. Yeah, we understand. I don't understand, you bitch. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> What'd you do that for? Well, you could have just told us the truth from the get-go, man. We ain't bad peoples. You stupid cow. Multiple murderers, baby, but we're not bad people. Yeah, we've done a few. But God damn it, man, just tell people the truth next time. Look, I am sorry. I did not mean to deceive you. I have learned a lesson here today. To trust outsiders. Mm, all of them, maybe not good all ones. of them. Y yeah. Don't I understand exactly why you did this. Honestly, yeah. Uh, that's a good point, actually. I am a skull on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bad blood here, alright? Is there, Daniel? I ain't even got any blood. 
<laughs> no, so, point proven. <laughs> there you go. I ain't got blood good or bad. <laughs> well, that sells it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, um, deceiving bitch. <laughs> Will you please teleport us out of here? Yep, we'll go home. Uh, that I cannot do. What? There is no way to, for me to let you leave. You see, when I uh, studied the magics to teleport us here, I can only teleport people to Ravenloft. Ah. There is not a way for me to, uh, how you say, Come again. When you... Uh, pop them out. Pop them out. Uh, old deceiving friend now, I guess. Can we have a team meeting? Just over there in the Is that okay with you? A little team meeting? Little team meeting. Yes, that is fine. I will stay here with my son. He's a, he's a very lovely boy. He likes those berries, doesn't he? Who doesn't? Look, it's all around his face. Who, they look cute. Who does not like the berries? I oh, yes, have your team meeting. I will be over here. Thank okay. you. And in this little um, darkened kind of basement playroom, you guys skulk off to the corner. And Daniel's like, remember before uh, I- there was that old thing? When we were trapped in the Bog Lord's domain. Mm-hmm. Ages ago. Yeah. And you kill the Demi Lord that lords over a place. The mist disappears. Yeah. And then you're allowed safe passage to leave the place that the Demi Lord lords over. Right. I'm thinking that this lady here slept with a demon. Mm hmm. This place came to be. Mm hmm. And now everyone's trapped here and can't leave because she did something evil by sleeping with a demon. Yep. So basically, you're saying. I'm we, saying. We kill her. I'm saying that if, if we want to leave, we got to do something incredibly evil. Oh, God. But we've just done something incredibly good. Look, it ain't gonna be nice. How can we do this without causing too much pain? And what about the baby? He can oh live on. Oh my god. I've never had a child of my own, so I cannot tell you what it's like to be a father. We ain't raising a demon baby, you fucking maniac. Well, we can't kill one. Oh my god. It's kind of cute in a perverse way. Oh my god. What are we gonna do, man? Let's feed her the mushrooms. And then while she's tripping, we buff her in the back of the head. And throw her off the edge. No, we... We, we can throw her in the water down there. We can't be certain that will end her. Yeah, we have to. Oh. Oh my god. We have to... Uh. We, could, we, could, we could tell her to come up, go to the upstairs courtyard area, make her eat a mushroom, then throw her downstairs. What a day this is turning out to be. Uh, this is... I can't believe we're having this conversation. If there's no way out except that, and Daniel does pr- make a valid point, then I hate to say it, but... We're really going to condemn another woman's life just so we can get home? I mean, I know we've done a lot of bad shit, but we, we had to kill those Shadow Fae to get here because they were attacking us, first yeah. and foremost. Yep, yeah. self-defense. That, that guy we killed yesterday in honor of that poor poltergeist woman... That, that guy, he deserved it. He had it coming. Yeah, yeah, he did, right. yeah. That car we stole and that gnome that died, that was an accident, <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah. But, I... but just killing this woman, it don't seem right, no. man. I mean, she did deceive us, but she don't deserve to die. Uh, I think we should stop thinking about we're going we're gonna to take her. We're, I don't think we are. It doesn't seem right. So we stay here for the rest of the time? Well, no. Um, perhaps we try and platform it out of here, so... You know what happens when you do that. What? I, t- I told you goddamn months ago. I know a lot of, a lot has happened since then, but when I used to live back in the Boglands, there was a whole mist surrounding that place. And you can't get out. Yeah, every time you try to go through, you just go, boop, you're back where you, where, back where you started. He's right. It's like the beach again. No, oh. we, don't, we don't want to go back there, no. No. No, well... Well, our hands are tied, didn't they, really? You, you got a big decision on your hands, boys. I ain't gonna tell you what to do, because... Well, because, honestly, uh, I can't make you do shit, really. No, that's right, but we need to get home. We do need to get home, and as horrible as it is to say, the only way we can do so is by dispatching this lady. The only thing I will say is I think that this woman's days are numbered. Yeah. They, they found out about her baby, and those villagers, they ain't happy with her. She dropped a goddamn boat on them. And it's only going to be a matter of time before those people tear her to shreds. So really then, Daniel, what you're saying is is that uh, we're doing her a favour, really? Yes? If we do it... If, so if, we, if we put her down, 
in the nicest possible way. It's got to be better than being torn apart by savage villagers, isn't it? How about this, lads? If we convince her into coming upstairs to the top part, most top part of the castle, yes. maybe we could tell her about the villagers or something. She'd come upstairs unawares, and then, uh, well, we figured that bit out when we get up there, but I'm thinking she might want to go for a little swim. She might want to go for a little die. Die swim, yeah. <laughs> we reckon. It's best I've got. Yeah, all right, uh, fuck it. Let's just try it, man. We've been, we done too much talking. She's going to get suspicious. That's true. So anyway, then I told the bloke in the tavern, <laughs> you ain't having it unless you give me an our pasty. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a very light-hearted conversation. Oh, it was. We were just going over good old times. But, hold on. So what did you decided to do? Stay here forever? Yeah, we was thinking about uh, spending a bit of time here. Quite like them berries. Uh, only problem is, I think I hear something. Can you hear that, butler? Uh, I yeah. do not hear anything. Oh, I definitely do. Daniel, can you hear that? Yeah, it sounds like those villagers got up the uh, got up the rope bridge. They're coming in. They're gonna to start attacking. Them. Oh my god! Let's go, quick. Let's go up to the top and uh, have a look outside. You mean on the ramparts? I think so. Um, if the they best, get in here, they're the gonna come for your look. baby. It's oh, the best no. place to look, isn't it? Got both of you. Give me a personality roll. They're gonna try and finish the job they started. Bastards. Uh, Twelve. Eleven. She looks at you and she's like, "That makes sense to me." You don't want them coming in here? No, we do not. Let no. us go up to the Let's garage. go. Let's go quickly. How do we get up? You lead the way, sorry. She um, goes out of the room, um, marches through a, a few sets of doors, up some stairs, and you guys um, go through a hatch in the ceiling and up a ladder. She's all the while holding Gwydion, her baby, in one arm. And you go up to the ramparts, and you can see that you are stood behind some, like, crenellations on the top of the castle. At the bottom... Lo and behold, it turns out your prediction was in fact correct. No. <laughs> you could see a lot of villagers um, at the bottom, sort of chanting angrily and and shaking their fists up at the up at the top of the castle. Um, Stephanie sort of pokes her head down below, um, still holding the baby in one hand, and she just goes, "Oh shit! Told you, angry mob. What do, what do you propose we do, gentlemen? I mean, we could sort of throw a few spells there. I do not want to kill them all. I tell you what." Send a couple of warning spells at them. Or I'll Gideon while you set it, while you scare them, and then that, hopefully that'll disperse them. No, I, I cannot cast spells. My tome it was destroyed. Well, a bit of foul language might work. Get on the edge and give them a shout. <laughs> I'll look angry, and that might at least get rid of some of them. What do you want me to convince them to go away? They seem pretty annoyed. Yeah, but you never know. Well, put put Gideon j- down just in case. Yeah, don't let him don't let him get near the edge. Bless him. Look at him. He's all contented and buried. Right, give me a personality roll. 17. Very good idea. I do. Well, you, you must not put a baby near a high edge. Exactly. And she, she hands over the baby to, to Grimald and she's like, be careful. Be oh, careful. yeah. Careful. Gucci, Gucci, go! Oh, God, keep your voice down. Sorry, Gucci, Fuck Gucci, go! And she leans over the edge and she, she, she goes, um, as she, she starts to speak, she's like, My people, I am still the same person you thought I was. I am a great woman. I am still the person that saved all of you. Now. As as um, as this is happening, can I use sneak silently to get behind her, please? Nineteen. You sneak right up behind her, and she does not even know you're there. The f- the sound of her shouting masks your footsteps. You are all monsters. At this point, as I snuck behind her, I'm just gonna push her off the edge. Give me a melee attack roll. Twenty-eight overall, but it was a crit. Please, I beseech you, you must remember that I am the same person. <laughs> You see her plummet down. Do the it. villagers all move out of the way and she just explodes after a long fall into a gigantic mess of blood and gore. The villagers suddenly stop talking for a minute and then they just look up at your face, lo- looking down at them. And as they look up, they, there's a sudden gasp uh, as all of the mist above the shadow rift so starts to dissipate. And Grimald, you're left standing there holding this demon baby. Uh, buddy? Grim? Yep. Might be time for a levitate spell. Uh, I think you're right. <laughs> Give it the old one, two. Let's go. Uh, well done, Butler. Um, good job. Right. Uh, hello, little one. Uh, I'll explain everything when you're older. Levitate! <laughs> Uh, 
and, and you create a floating invisible platform once again and fly out of the shadow rift. You're once again back on that golden field that you were before and you're flying towards Castle Ravenloft. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, you two, let's never speak about this ever. Understand? That and this little one. Yeah, don't talk about it too. All right. Um, well, it looks like we became dads. Yeah. Yeah, kind of nice, really, in a weird way, isn't it? No. No. This is horrible. No, this is a complication that's probably going to have terrible, terrible, terrible consequences. I feel corrupted. Yep. Anyway, off we go. We got demon baby. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. that's so grim. That was awesome. Well, well, well played, guys. Oh, oh man, that, that was such a fucking weird ending. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe oh. how, how weirdly that went. Oh, I can't believe we just did that. I she was ended dirty. up being all right, but she, you know, that was the only way out. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's that whole thing of like you've come this far, and there, it was like you know, she she was kind of like in your way do you mm-hmm. know what I mean yeah. regardless of whether or not she was an innocent it was like you you guys were saying like there, there was the, the, the thing is is that those villagers were going to get her in the end anyway yeah either that or she was going to kill all of them and then be on her own you know mm-hmm. what I mean it was like there was just this horrible situation there and, and uh, it was euthanasia yeah in a way <laughs> in a, a roundabout way, round way. <laughs> oh, it's just God. a shame that now you've got to look after her son forever that's alright but there you go <laughs> maybe we can find an orphanage for him <laughs> even orphanage yeah oh good well played guys that was funny thank as shit. you and you man that was um, but yeah, oh, and that was Raven Law another episode and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it I just want to say a big thank you to um, Stephen Van Der Weyer who's our new patron who Welcome was aboard, yeah. Stephanie Van Der Weyer the yep. queen that we just <laughs> killed sorry <laughs> sorry Stephen <laughs> Stephen Stephen um, but anyway um, if you liked that guys um, then uh, you can always get in touch with us we're on uh, we're on email we managed to get one of those we got one we found one yeah walked down the street in line behind there was one a wild one so yeah. we uh, caught it caught it with a net yeah tabletop twats at gmail.com we're on facebook me we google plus all of that stuff just search for tabletop twats absolutely and if you like this and you want to donate then please go over to our patreon which is tabletop twats and yeah give us a uh, give us a dollar give us how much you want whatever who cares and you can become Become a character in this show, become immortalized. If not you only, yeah. sorry, not only that, but all of our money gets recycled into the show as well. So if you yeah, like the other segments does. of it's it, it certainly does. Yeah, we've just we've actually just picked up something for mm-hmm. future episodes, Ooh, and yeah. it is bloody filthy. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. And one final shameless plug. What's that? Well, what is it? You tell me. I don't know. Uh, so now in. All good bookstores, no, not really. On Drive Through RPG, myself and Harrison have co-wrote a adventure called Whacked in the Wicket. Um, it's been published by Justin Insert Imagination, and um, we'd love it if you go check it out because we're yeah. really proud of it. It is an adventure all about um, posh cricketers uh, mm-hmm. being forced into doing an art heist mm-hmm. for a, uh, a L- London gangster, the most feared gangster in all of London. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it's it's quite good. Me and Nick wrote it together, mm-hmm. and it's it's got everything in there you need to run that adventure. So it's got. Um, um, it's it's got awesome. Thank you. Characters, it's got maps, it's got loads of twists and complications you can add into the adventure. It's got attempts at jokes that me and Nick made in there because it's yeah. a comedy adventure. Uh, yeah, and uh, I say attempts, honestly. Uh, we don't know. We don't know, mate. We don't know. <laughs> but it's all you need, no prep required. You can literally just download this and you're good to go. Yep, if you ever need a, a con game to run, you can mm-hmm. yeah, you can d- get this out and run it in like five minutes. It's for Savage Worlds, it's amazing. Whacked in the wicket. So pick that up. Three dollars, mate. Three dollars, and it's one of the first adventures that's come out under the suede rules. Yeah, so. Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Yes. Pick that up. Please. And that's us, guys. So Thank you and good night. Yep. Ciao. What the fuck was that? episode comes out a week late and then they fucking put the demon baby in that shit I don't know what the fuck this this shit gets worse with every episode I swear to god anyway come back next time if you want more Raven Lord bye how do I turn the microphone 